What up YouTube? Today we got another unboxing to do. Once again here in my backyard as usual. We got a Top Don BT Mobile Pro S battery tester. So stay tuned. All right, so this is it right here. This is what we got in the box. Top Don BT Mobile Pro S wireless battery and system tester or 12 volt system tester. Says can perform 12 volt lead acid battery tests from your tablet. This one actually works with the Phoenix Light 2, which is part of the reason why I got it. Um, it can test all these test standards, cold cranking amps, and then I'll be completely honest with you, I have no idea what any of those other ones are. Mm -hmm. Suitable for cars, SUVs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Extra safe protection, online database, in vehicle and out of vehicle, okay. And then, okay, so this must be something for other countries then. Maybe that's how they do their batteries in other countries there. So, anyway, um, let's go ahead and get the box opened up here. I'm sure there's not going to be much to this part. Um, mostly just the test, of course. There's not a whole lot in here. It is kind of nice, and I'll be completely honest with you. When I ordered it, I was not aware that it came with a case. So that is actually pretty nice, because I know that the tool itself is not going to fit in the case with my other Top Don stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up here. Take a look inside. Looks like we got our user manual here. And then we've got the actual tool here. So it's nice it's got these little clips. They seem to be pretty, pretty heavy duty there. And uh, so let's go ahead and run a test. Okay. And then uh, we'll go out to the van. We'll see how this works. Should be able to do battery starter and alternator. All right, so this is our test vehicle here, my work van, the 2006 Chrysler Town & Country. We've got the Top Don Phoenix Light 2 loading up. I just did some updates on it, so it's having to restart. And um, we're gonna go ahead and get the tool set up here. So let me go ahead and get started on that. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And then we'll get her out of this box, or this case, rather. We've done that, I'm gonna set this case to the side here. We'll get our cables all unhooked here. So here's the tool. Let's go ahead and hook it up to a battery. So we got the positive cable back there. And then we've got the negative right here. And that does turn the tool on. And then it's got a flashing light for the Bluetooth. So I don't know if it's trying to connect or not. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this where you guys can see it. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and zoom in on what we're actually doing here. So you guys can see, we're going to change the camera angle a little bit. Not exactly sure why the scan tool keeps uh, restarting. But anyway, now we should be able to go to module. We can hit battery tester. And this will be my first time ever using this, guys. So um, bear with me. Um, so it looks like I may or may not have to register first. Let's see. Uh, we'll go ahead 
actually guys give me a second let me uh create this account real quick just to make sure i got everything fully set up and then we'll be right back all right so after you get your account set up which is pretty much just going to ask you for an email and then you create a password and you get that set up so once you get your account set up, you follow the prompts, it's pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy. It brings us to this screen here, where we have battery test, cranking test, charging test, full system test, which will do all three of the previous tests in one, battery library, where you can look up information, test report, which I believe can uh, send email or print out the report of what was found, use guide which is probably for the tool itself and then of course you have settings so first let's start with a battery test all right so for the battery test i've changed the camera angle to be a little bit closer however the tool is still hanging out right over here just outside the screen so i'm going to go ahead and hit battery test and we'll see what happens it says please connect bluetooth device first set up the Bluetooth connection. So we'll hit scan. It's found to the BT Mobile Pro S. We'll hit confirm. Then that light just went solid. I'll pull that up so you can see the blue light is now solid, indicating we are connected. And of course on the screen, Bluetooth is successfully connected. So now we'll try this again. We'll hit battery test. Now it wants us to enter some information about the battery. So is it a regular flooded AGM flat plate, AGM spiral, gel, or EFB? And I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I believe that I just have a regular battery. Let me just triple check on this battery, make sure it doesn't say nothing. Yeah, I don't think there's anything crazy. I think that's just a regular old battery. So now battery standards we're going to check by cca and then the battery value this particular battery has 800 cold cranking amps so we're going to hit 800 and then we're going to hit next okay so it wants us to enter report details about the vehicle. We are going to skip that. However, if you were going to do this for a customer, it gives you the option to put the make, the year, the VIN, the phone number of the customer, the shop address. So perhaps that's actually your phone number. Um, and then the shop name. Uh, so, okay. The first phone number's got to be the phone number of your customer, then the shop address. This is probably the shop phone number, shop name, customer name. Um, so basically you just go from left to right, make, model, year, mileage, all that good stuff. So we're going to hit skip on that for now. And let's see what we got. Here's our battery test report good battery condition please charge state of charge is at 37 percent battery voltage is 2.2 internal resistance is 3.7 milliohms 98 percent state of health the battery is greatly affected by the environment and the test results of different battery slash environment temperatures are different Test results are only responsible for battery state at the time of test. Test results are only for scientific research, data analysis, performance evaluation, blah, blah, blah. I think this is kind of just them covering their own ass to make sure they don't get sued or anything based off of this test. Um, so unfortunately this does not appear to test the reserve capacity so there are definitely um, way better battery testers out there this at least from what i can tell just seems to be a glorified load tester 
So let me pull one of those out as well and we'll show you that and we'll see if we get the same results. All right, so we are zoomed back out here and I've got my uh, regular digital load tester here. You can also get analog versions of these as well where they have a little needle. Um, so this will put a load on the battery. Let's do that real quick. I'll hook this up. I'm not even gonna bother taking the other stuff off. It shouldn't shouldn't have too much effect on it. We'll try to just clamp on there the best we can. And then we'll run this test. Hopefully you guys can see that these cords are not very long. So we'll hit okay. We'll go up to 800. We'll hit test. 12.22. So this is testing at 2 point, or excuse me, 3.23, and that says 3.7. They're both picking up 3.2 volts. And then this says it's got 819. This says it's got 790. And then this is saying that the state of health or charge one of the two up at the top is a hundred percent so essentially this tool on the top don here this tool rather is just a slightly upgraded version of this tool that's all it really is I was honestly kind of thinking that it would test batteries on a little bit deeper level than just a load test. However, the ability to have one that works with the scan tool, I'm sure, could potentially come in handy. At the very minimum, this will give you the ability to send reports to your customer if you decide to do so. However, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, it's definitely nice to share as much information as possible with your customer. However, I will just give my personal opinion that most customers aren't going to give a shit about that. All they really care about is that you get their car fixed. So I'm not necessarily, you know, regretting buying this because I kind of want to have the full top don set as far as like all the stuff that works with this scan tool. And so I pretty much got all of that. I've got the scope. I've got the battery tester. And so I pretty much have the complete kit at this point. Um, so anyway, um, like I said, just kind of seems to be a glorified load tester to me but it is much nicer than this one i must say so now let's do another test all right so we're back at the main menu here and i'm going to hit cranking test during the test please execute the test correctly and completely according to the prompt information and input data should be objective and accurate Turn off all accessories. Okay, so all accessories are off. Turn off all systems. After pressing the confirm, start the vehicle. So we'll hit confirm, and then I'm going to start the engine. And then it asks, does the engine start successfully? We'll hit confirm. And then we're going to skip the report again. So here's our cranking test report. And I'm going to shut the engine off real quick just so it's not so loud. Okay, so we've got cranking time of just barely under one second 985 milliseconds and oh boy the sun just came out very nice cranking voltage was 11.72 volts that's actually pretty dang good battery right there to hold at that especially if it was only at 12.2 apparently and then you know it kind of gives us the same spiel again Definitely something you can do with a multimeter as far as the cranking voltage if you have a helper to watch or a camera. 
Um, however, the cranking time is something that you will not get uh, with any tool, uh, you know, unless you have a tool such as this one. And of course, if I didn't mention, you can print and share this, you know, so that's kind of nice to just be able to do that. Uh, and this is, of course, something that the other load tester I showed you does not do. So when you want to go back to the main screen, we're going to hit this back arrow. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, alternator test. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit charging test. So it says step one, start the vehicle. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll hit next. Turn off all accessories, start the vehicle, press confirm to continue. So we've done that. Step two is turn off all accessories. I did have my automatic headlights on, so I went ahead and turned those off. The climate control and radio and everything was already off, so now we're going to hit next. I think I might have missed it there. Next. Keep all electronics off. Increase engine speed to 2,500 RPM and hold it. Press confirm to continue. After the test results appear, release the throttle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Next, turn on all accessories, headlights, AC, radio, etc. My AC doesn't actually work, so I'm not going to turn that on, but I will turn on the headlights and the radio. I guess you don't necessarily need AC to turn on the blower motor, so I went ahead and turned that on as well. So we'll hit confirm, then it's probably going to have us rev it up again for a second, at least I would imagine. We're going to hit skip report. Alright, we got a result, let's turn this engine off. All right, so let's scroll down and see what we got here. So the no load voltage and the load voltage are exactly the same. And it does actually give us a charging ripple, which is definitely good. That's something you're not going to get on one of those little cheapy tools. And that's definitely a good bit of information to have. If you're getting too much ripple voltage or AC voltage, that could indicate that you have a bad diode in your alternator. So that is all three tests completed. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the other features while we're in here, might as well. This is battery library. So you can basically put the year make model, cold cranking amps, etc. So let's just do that just for fun. We'll select type of vehicle going to be passenger cars light truck etc the make we'll scroll down here we'll hit Chrysler model town and country year 2006 oh wow this bad boy only goes to 2016 that might need a update and i tell you what that is definitely old school right there i wonder if this tool came out before the the uh, scan tool did because this scan tool is only a couple years old as far as i know like when it actually came out 
and I don't know if it's as high as 800 from the factory, but I'm just going to look it up here. And so it pretty much it gives us the um, engine size region is can. I don't know if that's Canada or not. Tells you the group size of the battery. And then it tells you this is for the 3.8 liter, which is what I have. And then this is for a 3.3. It looks like it's pretty much the same. Group size 34. If we hit learn more. And it kind of gives you some information about the battery. Not really sure how useful that is exactly in an automotive setting. But um, if you're really not sure, if you suspect that your vehicle has the wrong size battery then that could definitely help because i mean if it's your personal vehicle as a mechanic you know it's whatever i'm sure you can figure that out but if you got a customer coming in and you suspect they may have the wrong battery in there that's an excellent way to figure that out because right here i don't know if you can see it, it says 34 ext so i've got a group size 34 so that is indeed correct so now let's pull this up. It's got test reports. It shows all the the um, reports that I just did. Battery test, cranking test, charging test. And so we can delete those or I'm sure we can do something with them from here as far as like sending them to the customer if we wanted. Here's the user guide, user manual. So, you know, nothing that we really need to look at necessarily the tool and the software for this is relatively self-explanatory then that's a pretty cool picture we've got a um, settings you know your personal account because i did set up an account of course i guess you can look up your test reports from this menu as well and then you've got your user guide in this menu as well so i'm not really sure why they uh put that in here if there's a separate place to look for it there's time zone setting language setting i assume you probably have to be on wi-fi for that but you can send feedback tells you what version i assume that means the current update on it and then you can do a firmware update which i actually want to try to do that and see it says firmware is at its latest version okay interesting all right so let's go ahead and also check out this little text box as you can give a review interesting online service phone interesting okay and then when you click on that that's just your preferences and uh, email there all right, well, overall, I think it's a pretty decent tool. It's definitely a nice upgrade from the basic load tester that I have in the sense that it can do reports and it can also check the starter and the alternator as well. However, you know, once again, that's all stuff that you can kind of do with a regular multimeter and potentially do it quicker. So, um, not really sure how much I'm going to use it because I kind of thought that it was one of those testers where it was like the end all be all like this is the the result it is good or it is bad and I would say that you know you could probably get pretty dang close with this on most situations but um, you know I've seen circumstances where batteries or starters are bad um, even though they start the car, you know, during certain temperature conditions. And so that's kind of the main thing that this doesn't do that I was kind of hoping for in a battery tester, but I'm sure that those types of testers are going to be significantly more expensive than about 70 or 80 bucks, which is what I paid for this one, because those actually take temperature into account as well. But Overall, I think it's a pretty decent tool, and I'm happy I got it. Just another thing to add to my top Don arsenal of things that I can use with my scan tool. And that's going to be the end of the video for today, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. 
Please like and comment on this video. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Also, we have channel memberships. Consider joining that. That would also be awesome. Also, stay tuned for many more awesome videos on the Andy's Auto YouTube channel. This is Andy, signing off. Subscribe!